So Heppel is lucky enough to offer not one, but two important Jack Bush canvases in the upcoming sale. Swing Gay from 1976 and Linda Number no. 6 from 1973. So Jack Bush's work is about a lot of things. It's about form, it's about color, composition. But one of the most important things it's about to me is joy. And the thing that's helped me understand that most clearly is looking at his entire career. Great. I, it's interesting you say joy because I think from his earliest landscapes to his late, totally abstract paintings, a guiding light for him was the ability to express his feelings. And so you're sensing joy and that is really the subject was to convey an emotion, uh, convey a deep feeling and to have the viewer feel it too. He wasn't about theories, he was really about trying to capture and convey emotion. The earliest works that I'm familiar with are produced kind of in the style, at least in the tradition of the Group of Seven, mm -hmm. which people don't associate with Jack Bush at all. They, Not typically. Yeah. They, they think he's entirely separate from that. But. Um, but it is a part of the full picture and very important. I was looking back at which artists may have helped to inspire his approach. I see J.E.H. MacDonald um, in strokes of color acting as structure. Mm -hmm. But he found his joy in abstract painting and I think because it was the best vehicle for emotions, for describing his emotions. And so Painters 11, the, the group, the, the first abstract expressionist group in English Canada um, began exhibiting in 53, 54, 55. I would say attention grabbing shows, not commercially successful shows um, from what I've read about them. Um, they did lead to another very important meeting though, through William Ronald, uh, also a member of uh, Painters 11, who was based in New York by yeah. that point. Yes, so the suggestion was, why don't we have Clement Greenberg, a New York art critic, up to Toronto mm -hmm. to sort of have, I guess, essentially like studio critiques. Right. Jack Bush was very excited at the prospect of meeting Clement Greenberg. He could see the emulation in a lot of the Toronto painters. Uh -huh. And I think challenged them, especially Jack Bush, to maybe drop those, I don't want to call them gimmicks, but to drop mm -hmm. the airs of being... Sure an abstract expression is sure. that, you, that you don't necessarily have to like play the part, just get to the core of it. Yeah, some of the warmest, kindest things I've ever heard Greenberg say about Jack Bush's work was Jack Bush as a colorist. Yes. Second to essentially none. Such incredible use of pure color. So that brings me to speaking about how Jack Bush painting. Yeah. What are the advantages for a painter like Jack Bush to use a water-based acrylic? The quick dry time. Okay. That's the huge thing. A quick dry time which allows you to do things effectively without muddying things such as a ground like this mm -hmm. and then flat color on top. With an oil you'd have to wait at least three weeks, sometimes four, for a real dry period. Right, yeah. And if you're working from home in your home studio, that, that's tricky. Where are you going to put the, the wet canvases? Where are you right. laying them? But acrylic, he did become, he did master it. Yeah. And it allowed for, I think, also the ability to have these great big canvases because when he was done them and they dried very quickly, mm -hmm. he could roll them up and move right. on to the next. He really, I think, hits his mark in the 70s with making the medium of, of water-based acrylic sing with a painting, such as this, and Swing Gay. It's the contrast between those two paintings that I find really interesting. So how technically would he lay down the background of London Number no. 6, and how would he lay down the background of Swing Gay? He's making this in his first ever out of home uh, studio. And he, he liked to work with bowls, like plastic bowls. I guess t to us it would be, you know, dollar store bowls. Uh -huh. And he would first put the base color, so I think this brown taupe here, right? Mm -hmm. He'd have a base color of that color in his bowl. And then he would put dollops of the darker color 
the sort of mustard there. And he would mix it maybe one, two strokes. Basically, he did not mix it. Uh -huh. And then the paint, this not incorporated, unmixed, uh -huh. usually three colors, would go on with a roller. Okay. And then you get this this mottled effect. So they're known as the mottled grounds. And now, how would Swing Gay? How would the background be so laid down? So Swing Gay, he starts to move into creating more of a watered-down version of his background, but still this not entirely mixed bowls of paint. Mm -hmm. And he's hmm. saturating a sponge and swiping. Now, for the application of the forms, how much preparation was involved? He, as some people may have seen, he would do little sketches, like little studies, mm -hmm. before committing to the, to the large canvas. Mm -hmm so that he could have a little bit of time looking at it to see if that combination worked. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he's using pencil crayons mm -hmm. or, or chalks in, in little studies. They're about usually about this big. Right. In his earlier days, he would use felt tip marker. Mm -hmm. And he'd always been doing kind of little preliminary sketches to see what works. He'd, he'd even do it while he's on you know, the subway or, or while he's sitting in church too. Uh -huh. He would just do these sketches out to see what would work. Um, and he would call them his notes. I got a right. note that really worked. Right. And then sometimes he would call um, what he was aiming to do a format. And if you look closely, sometimes you can see the, the, the outlines. Like yeah, the, the chalk. At this point he's using a lot of chalk sometimes to sort of to, to plan that. Right. Despite the fact that he would often plan compositions, mm -hmm. it has a sense of facility, a sense of ease. Those are the best paintings in the world, the ones that look like they're a cinch to do. That's exactly right. To achieve something that's both grand and light, to, to have those two feelings in, in one place um, is a really, really remarkable achievement and I can't think of anybody else who, who does it like him.